ahead, so we're just getting loaded up with some ice. Got all our bait and stuff on the boat already. Pile in a bunch of ice for a long haul. probably saw a little bit of it but all topped up this hatch doesn't open all the way because that stuff Good show guys there about the same in the rest of them <laughs> so be all prepped and ready so probably get out of here I don't know sometime in the morning most likely early morning so start the long haul down the hill Certainly a beautiful day today. Mountain 
everything's all green. People are happy. All right, we'll bring you guys back very soon. Hi hey everyone. Well, we're just making our way south here. Right now we're in the Geese's Channel. Back that way is home. About eh, 85 nautical miles, give or take. Like I said, we're coming through the Geese's. These are the Geese's Islands over here, and over them are the Sitkanak Islands. And I'm just looking around and I can't get over how flat it is down here. There's like very little mountains. Over that way is uh, more of course, it's uh, more of the main body of Kodiak, but yeah, it's like crazy flat down here. Just like nice mellow sweeping hills. Give you guys a little panoramic. So this way is south. So around this corner up here is Alatak Bay, and that's where we're going to be fishing for the next few days, and uh, hopefully knock this quota out pretty quick. This is 3B quota. Uh, there's 3A, which I think the line starts somewhere right in here, like going through the Geese. It like goes from over, uh, I think maybe that tip, over to this tip here, and fish past it around the corner in Alatak Bay. Dad has the chart on the uh, computer that he can show you, but yeah, we're going 3B and hopefully just get some good fishing, get it knocked out because we're far from home. And it's quite, uh, quite different. We go see what Dad's up to. It's about halfway down the island, so if you kind of look at the island, um, this is Kodiak way up here, and uh, we are way down here now. Pop around the corner here, it should be just going to be a little choppy here for a few, but not too bad. I see some white caps up there, probably a tide rip. But uh, once we curve around up into the bay, it'll be just beautiful. Oh yeah, we're finally making some time too. I see that. So it's been a slow journey down. We bucked the tide pretty much all of yesterday. And uh, I guess we anchored up about 12.30 at night. And then we got up at uh, 5 and got going again. And um, should be getting gear in the water here around 10.30. Not sure how much we'll put out. We want to get it pulled before dark, so we're not going to go too crazy today, but at least scatter yeah. maybe three or four short sets around. And yeah, probably, probably just like four shorties, ground. I was thinking, huh? Yeah, Scout cover some around. ground, try and cover a couple of depths. Yeah. And uh, hopefully find some, some nice grade and some good fishing, fingers crossed, because we want to get in and out of this place a long <laughs> ways from home. Yeah, I was telling the people. Roughly 100 miles, 110 miles southwest of Kodiak. So. I was telling the people that we're in uh, 3B now, where, yeah. whereas usually we're in 3A. Yeah, so this is the line right here. It's not extended fully, but it's this yellow line here. It goes from Cape Trinity to the southeast. Uh, wherever the 200 mile line I guess and then uh, up here it comes back off of um, the corner here by Bumble Bay and continues to the northwest across Shelikoff Strait so this is the line anyways and uh, inside the bay is all 3B so we can fish in there and and up this coastline if we want till right in this area So hopefully we find decent fishing in the bay here. There's a lot of territory there. 
It's a deep bay. Um, actually, several bays in here. A lot of reefs everywhere. A lot of rocky areas. Some good depth, so we should be able to get what we need, I think. And um, hopefully it doesn't take us too long. Yeah. We'll see. You never know. Fishing's fishing. Yep, we'll see. All right, so I guess we're going to shoot out a set here. Yeah, I think our plan today is just to lay out four or five short sets, um, maybe five tubs each, five, six tubs, something like that. <clears throat> just kind of spread them around up here and uh, see what we come up with. Yeah, see what bites, right? Yeah, we're going to put some up shallow in the teens and probably drop some off into the 30s and 40s just kind of get a little bit of a spread. Um, the bay is not real deep right here where we're at. Further up it gets it gets deep into the 60s so maybe if we don't see a whole lot here we'll lay some up in the deep mud tomorrow like up in these 60s or something. There's even an 80 right there so that might not be bad up in there. It's a 60 or 68. Yeah. Uh, we're just gonna keep them uh, Spread the hooks out a little bit too. Yeah, there's also some rocky spots up deep up there too, so those might be productive. But for now, we're just gonna kind of check out this area right here. So we've got a uh, got herring, cod, octopus. Uh, not squid today. Squid's in the freezer. Forgot to pull out. So but pretty decent smorgasbord there. start setting out. So here dangling you can see is our uh, bird deterrence device. Basically just a 50 fathom long chunk of line with little streamers attached. Trails behind the boat and has the streamers dangling and uh, prevents birds from going after our bait. That way they don't get hooked and caught. Anyways, it's to prevent bird bycatch, so it's a good thing. Okay, I think I'll just start this one kind of like 38, 40 or so. Probably put like uh, 45 on this, okay? And uh, you can throw a third line now. Halibut! 
Anything about 30 foot spacing? Yeah, just a little longer than normal, I guess. Not, not too far apart, I guess, but yeah, whatever you think. Faster, Dad. I'd eat that. That were a halibut. set out four to go three or four so all right so we'll get our long line set ready here this is the starting end so I'll pull out a little bit of line to attach the buoy Extra 
there. Get my buoy ready. We just tie him off on the side of the boat, on the rails for storage. Secure him with a simple clove hitch. And to attach them to the line, just have an eye here. Take our end and just do a quick little sheet bend, just like that. Place secure, like that. Take our two loops of our buoys and hang them on these horns on the back, right here. Oil will just sit there. So you can see our line goes through this uh, launch eye here. That's just to keep it from going all over the place, especially when Dad's turning back and forth. Just come straight off the reel and leave it there, whichever way. And then as it's going out, well, we're looking at ourselves. We'll deploy the buoy, we'll pull out however much buoy line that that says. Here in 25 fathoms, we've got 25 fathoms. Every 25 fathoms on the line we have a mark at 25, 50, and 75. And that helps me gauge how much buoy line I'm putting out. Once we have sufficient buoy line, I grab my anchor. It's just a uh, Old Navy anchor. We also have the old school halibut anchor right there. Yeah, these ones are pretty handy. I like them. Anyway, tie the anchor on. We just take our line, one loop, two loop, around, and pull your first loop through. Just snug it up like that. That gives you a little loop here. It is uh, it's an easy knot to untie because you have a, I guess just a bite on one side and the other side stays kind of loose so you can easily pull your loop over after it has been pulled off the bottom and pull it out without struggling to untie it. If you were to like do a regular overhand knot like this or something, that comes tight, it'll never come out. Or at least not without a bunch of effort and you don't have time for that when you're hauling your set in. So we go with this easy knot from this angle. Now people have called this a perfection loop. We're not really sure what kind of knot it is. So we'll just go with perfection loop. It's fairly close but still just a little variation. So anyways As the buoy line goes out, I'll wrap this on the launching ring there, and that lets me uh, easily manipulate this and tie a knot. And same thing with the anchor, and I'll just do a simple sheet bend to tie it onto the anchor line, or yeah, tie onto the long line, just like that. Pretty bulletproof. After that, I'll deploy the anchor and start snapping hooks on. Can you help me move the bait, Dad? Help me move the bait? Okay. It got heavy. 
got me? So there's like a rocky spot over here, you think we should put one there, and then one a little further up. It's like a mile and a half if we need to do if I go up here. So there's a spot over here that's like in a tent. Okay. Let's try it. Yeah. And that will kind of split the difference on the two. Yeah, for sure. Keep our run time down a bit more. the anchor as the line is pulling out. I'll be snapping on our bait snaps and uh, as you can see it's just a little stainless snap and you just depress the arm on it to open up that mouth and put it on the line just like that. It locks in really good. Sometimes we have a I think we have one or two tubs of smaller line which it sometimes slides on but it's not a big deal it doesn't really move around too much but really simple system just to snap on like that bolts good bulletproof back here you see these two tubes as the line is going out i direct my bait into the tube and snap it on and that keeps my hands clear from the bait going out no chance of me getting hooked or any other thing but if, as you're as you're motoring if you were to snap this on of course this is pulling so the hook like goes wild like that but in the tube it's just contained and safe so that's kind of the rundown of what's actually happening here for those of you who are new Pretty clean setup, safe and easy.
the mark, so I was getting nervous. Yep. Unprepared. Tisk tisk. Oh dear. Well unprepared. Yeah, that that line, I've seen that before, this line has been cut. So oh. the mark is gone. Oh oh. oh. It's betrayed me before. It's like, where is it? No brain out. So there's a spot over here that's like a 40 fathom gut and then right up on top of it is rocky and hard for like five miles. Deep enough, too deep. Is there crabs down in the mud? Gonna eat all the bait? Ah. Just do a short one down the deep. It's fine. Uh -huh. We could just do a short one down the deep too. Like same thing, a fiver. Yeah, no, <laughs> just, do a, just do a fiver and see. Right? Where's that deep spot with Probably. Like That's up there, you say? Over at Kelsey, you know? Yeah. And that deeper stuff. It could be totally. Yeah, I'll be up on this side. Alright, guys, well, we'll do a couple more sets, a few more sets, and uh, I guess just bring you back once we're hauling. So, see you then. All right, everyone, just rolling up on our gear here. It's afternoon now. Hopefully you have some decent halibut fishing.
warm. Warm out. Very warm out. Oh, 
think there's two new ones in line anymore. Oh, you got me! I know, Son of a gun, you got me. 